right. Now, recently, um, the Apollo 15 landing site has been spotted. They believe that the, the – Oh, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You've seen that? Yeah, that was cool. It wasn't um, – it, it, people say this, this isn't proof we landed on the moon. It's like, well, no, it isn't. But basically, um, when the Apollo missions landed, they disturbed the dust around them. And there's this mission called Clementine. It was a military mission that orbited the moon and took a lot of pictures. And I I think I'm pretty sure it was a Clementine picture that yeah, just yeah. shows like a little a little spot on the moon, but it's right where Apollo 15 was. Now, those of us who know we landed on the moon looked at that and went, "Oh, cool!" And those of us who maybe have their suspicions are like, "Look, it's a smudge on the moon." Yeah, and, but and I'll go either way question. on that. Here's my question about that. Sure. If, if there's this big smudge they can see from Clementine, how come when you look at any photos of the lunar module, the, the lander, there's no blast crater whatsoever? That was like a big like uh, point with a lot of the hoax theorists, too. The, the hoax theorists were saying that all the initial images of, uh, that NASA had drawn before uh, the Apollo launches all show that there was going to be a big blast crater. There's that famous drawing that, um, uh, what is his name, the guy? that does all those old... Chesley you know, Bonestell. No, 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 I'm sorry. He, he's a, a guy that has those old friendly paintings that you always see of, like, uh, you know, a guy giving a kid an apple and everyone's smiling. Norman, Rock, Norman Rockwell. Rockwell, Rockwell. Rockwell. Yeah, Norman Rockwell actually has a painting of uh, an Apollo astronaut climbing out of one of the lunar modules, and he's standing in this gigantic blast crater. But if you look at any of the photographs of the lunar module, there's no blast crater whatsoever. So which one is it? Is there a blast crater from the lunar module, or is there no blast crater? And if there's no blast crater, then how can this Apollo 11 photograph from Clementine show a blast crater when you look at the clear, very clear photographs, the close-ups of the lunar module shows no blast crater whatsoever? Well, I'm going to have to call Norman Rockwell's alma mater and make sure they take away his aeronautical engineering degree. <laughs> That's a good Rockwell's point. Uh... All the old photographs from NASA, or <laughs> nah. all the old drawings from NASA. When they, when they, before they'd gone to the moon, they weren't sure exactly what it was going to be like. And if you look at uh, Chesley Bonestell, the artist I mentioned, he's the one who really, with Werner von Braun, popularized this idea of, of going back to the moon. His paintings are totally cool. But when you look at the landscapes that he drew versus the landscapes that are there, they're different. We had this idea of what the moon was going to look like that didn't turn out to be right. And so, you know, in some of these paintings, they show uh, this huge flame coming out of the bottom of the lunar lander as well. Right. But that's not true. There is no big, giant flame like that. They used a fuel which didn't make a big flame. You couldn't see it. So the, the drawings weren't that accurate. Now, when they landed... Um, there was not a blast crater, and, and this is a big theory, they, the conspiracy theory. They say there was 10,000 pounds of thrust coming out of the bottom of this thing, and it should have, you know, five tons should have blown out this huge hole. Well, yeah, it was 10,000 pounds of thrust at maximum thrust, but in fact, as they were landing, they throttled down. I mean, you don't blast out of your garage at 80 miles right. an hour, no you know. blast crater is the point, but yet this photograph from Clementine oh, oh. supposedly is a blast crater. Right. Well, uh, or I shouldn't say right. I should say yes. That was, that was part of the point you were making so um the thrust wasn't as big and it was spread out over a big area so it didn't it didn't make a blast crater what the what the apollo 15 landing site image from clementine is showing is not a blast crater it's where the dust is disturbed clementine was a mission to map out it, it had a lot of uh, it was actually a, what they call a technology tester they used a lot of off-the-shelf stuff to make cheap detectors and they were they were doing a lot of stuff with it but one of the things it did it was it was mapping out the minerals on the surface of the moon which is something you need to know if they there's going to be something you need when you're going to go back, like a uh, supply of oxygen or titanium or whatever. So they did this mineral, mineralogical map. I am a scientist, not a linguist, and I have a hard time with some big words. But um, it, it did that. And so what it's actually mapping is a disturbance in the surface, not really a crater. So you can imagine um, uh, you could go out to uh, – let's, let's use the baseball diamond analogy again. You go to the infield. You can, you can run your hand over the dust and make a disturbance in the dust without making a crater. That's what was seen. It's just where the right, dust I'm, was I'm pushed away. I'm looking at the photograph. I've seen the photo, but it's a very, very big disturbance. Now, when you look yeah. at the, the sites, though, and you look at under the lunar module, you see nothing. You see no disturbance whatsoever. So which one is it? Is it a big disturbance or is it no disturbance? Hold on a second, Joe. We're going to take another break. We're going to come back <laughs> and get that answer. You sure have questions, Joe. <laughs> now, you've got to say, 
Joe knows his stuff. Yes, he does. You know, and how, how many papers you got in front of you, Joe? You doing this off the top of your head? I'm doing most of it off the top of my head. I'm impressed. I have a couple of photographs that I saved. Uh, this, this is great, Joe. Thanks so much. We're going to be back with Joe Rogan, host of Fear Factor, and who has some questions about whether we landed on the moon, and Phil Plate, the bad astronomer. And this is uh, Michael Goudeau, who's trying to keep up on the computer, and Penn Jillette on Free FM, CBS Radio. <laughs> Yeah, this is Penn Gillette, Free FM, CBS Radio. This is Michael Goudeau. Let's get right back into it. We have Joe Rogan, the uh, host of uh, Fear Factor, and someone who's done an incredible amount of research about the uh, the moon landing and whether it happened or not. And we have Phil Plate, the bad astronomer, astronomer from badastronomy.com. And the question he just asked was, uh, if you're going to try to see it with the Clementine, there's a heck of a lot of dust. And it sure didn't seem that in the pictures that... Uh, that There's a that large followed. dark spot in the Clementine photographs that they're using to uh, represent the area where Apollo 15 supposedly landed. You know, that dark spot, as I recall, and I don't have it in front of me, but I think that dark spot is, is a false color. It might even be a negative. because they no, were, it's, they, it's, it's a photograph. I mean, it's pretty clear. Um, I don't it, think it's a negative. I don't think Clementine actually had an optical imager. I might be wrong on that. I don't know if it had a camera like that, but it was sensitive to different types of minerals. And so I, it, it looks like a photograph, but I'm not sure that it's a photograph in that, that if you were flying over the moon right there, you would see a dark spot where it saw a dark spot. You would see uh, a disturbance in the surface. And what they did is when they landed, the, the rocket uh, exhaust from the lander was pushing the dust around. So directly underneath the lander, the dust was, was blown outward, sort of in a radial pattern, just out in 360 degrees in every direction. And it went a long way. It was carried out by the force of the thrust. And so over a large area, there was a disturbance in the dust, but it was really only cleared out directly below the lander because there's no air on the moon. And if you take a blow dryer and blow it into like a pile of baking powder or something like that, you get all the curly cues and it makes a huge disturbance and all that. But without that air to carry the dust on the moon, it really only just blew straight out and left sort of a a hole under the lander directly underneath it. Right, so, but this brings us back to the initial point. There was no hole under the lander. I mean, you a hole under in the, the dust. There's absolutely nothing. There's yeah. no disturbance whatsoever. I mean, no, There's no dust on the, on the pads. It's flat and smooth. It looks like it's completely undisturbed. That's right. It's, it is disturbed because there was dust there that got blown out. There's no oh, crater. But this is 1994 that Clementine circled, correct? Uh, something like that, yeah. It was, 1994. You know. So we're talking about 20 plus years? Are you expecting the years, and that's what's left? The wind is going to blow the dust back. No, you mean uh, that's what's left of of what? Twenty well, plus years later, there's this gigantic disturbance in this area that gets pelted by micrometeorites every day of the week. Oh, oh, oh! Um, the the surface of the moon is actually billions of years old. The, right. There's the dust and everything there, but there's not. I mean, micrometeorites doesn't really. They don't change the surface that. Uh, quickly. What about meteorites themselves? I mean, don't we get hundreds of meteorites a day? I mean, how can they possibly see a spot that's 20 years old from something that, if you look at the photographs, made zero, no blast crater at all. It made no disturbance whatsoever. Yet, 20 plus years later, they can find this spot? Well, finding How do they this... find the spot? It doesn't make sense to me. Well, we know where they landed. I mean, it... I know that they, we know where they landed, but we have very clear photographic evidence of the, of, the, of the lunar module sitting on the surface of the moon with no disturbance. Yet you can see this somehow or another, this invisible disturbance from space 20 years later. That seems a little weird. No, no, no. I, I'm not saying that there's no disturbance on the surface. I'm saying there's no blast crater. The dust was removed from that spot. Yeah. But he, 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 he lunar module. So like what am I missing? Happened. Okay, when he keeps asking over and over okay, again. Okay, what I'm not hearing. Let's why. all get into this. Yeah, Come on. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe stating it will help. Cause it is okay. <laughs> he is saying that uh, there is not a discernible blast crater. You've explained why there isn't. And then he's saying, but then you turn around and say, on the Clementine images, we see a disturbance. How come we can't see the disturbance at the time it happened, and yet we can see it 20 plus years later? A large Is that disturbance good? 20 plus years later. Okay. You know, it, it seems to me that it, the moon is, is basically a rock covered by two feet of chocolate powder. And if you blow off the powder, you get down to rock, and there's not a blast crater in the rock, but you have blown away all of the chocolate powder. 
Michael is precisely right, and he has concisely yeah! said what was. <laughs> I was really stumbling over. Yes, <laughs> that's my moon. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm here to release some breaking see, NASA news. I mean, you see this image? It looks like a crater. It's not. It's just. A, it's just where the dust got blown around and mixed up. But it doesn't look like there's any dust blown around or anything happens whatsoever to the very clear, high-resolution photographs of the underneath the lunar module. Yeah, why can't we see the dust disturbance at the time, but only 20 We don't see years nothing. Old? You well, see nothing. It looks exactly the same. No, no, no. When you, if you actually look at a lot of the pictures, well, of course, you can't take a picture of the landing spot before they landed. We, we don't have that technology. So we only have pictures after the lunar lander was there. And when you look under the, the, the landers, you can see sort of these uh, these black radial streaks from the surface being scorched a little bit by the... By I the, don't uh, see that anywhere. That's in, that's in one of the pictures, I believe. I've, I've looked seen at it. every single one of them. <laughs> I've never seen anything well, I might, remotely.